singing country music. That's what I've always dreamt of doing as a young boy growing up in South Carolina. It was out of the ordinary to dream such a dream. I moved to Nashville to get a record deal. and I didn't really know what I was doing. My faith was really tested. I wrote this song called Long Black Train when I laid the pen down. I said, nobody's ever gonna wanna hear this. In Fairfield County, something new comes across my desk every day. Crimes are committed, cases are solved, and a community is made safe by the hardworking employees of the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to This Week with Sheriff Dave Phelan, a weekly program here on LSN Television. We're also carried by a number of the radio affiliates here in Lancaster. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week. Uh, we produce this program, uh, and it's taped, actually, at Fairfield Christian Academy. Uh, the students here do a, do a great job. Our executive producer, Kelly Roberts, behind the scenes, lines up the guests, gets a lot of the questions together, and does a terrific job behind the scenes. Back by popular demand is Deputy T.J. Strong. Hey, Good to see you again. Good to see you. You were here last week. I was. And uh, T.J. is actually assigned a job in Family Services, the Child Support Division. And for the viewers and listeners that may have missed it last week, why don't you uh, just kind of give us the Reader's Digest version of, uh, recap, of what I, recap of what you do down there and what, what that's about. Well, my current assignment, like I said, I'm in charge of uh, executing the warrants for the Child Support Office, uh, serving papers, sitting in on court hearings, I do security for the building if needed, uh, try to be visible in there as much as possible. So I'm pretty much their, uh, their go-to guy or their, whatever they need, I... I try to do for them. And you talked last week, last year you served, what, about 150 warrants? I was just over 150 last wow. year I served. Wow. Um, attempted almost about 250. Now you've been assigned to the jail, you've been assigned to the radio room, you've been assigned to the patrol division, now you're, you have something that you enjoyed, and you're one of our SWAT members, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. Any, any area of the sheriff's office that you've really enjoyed a lot? Uh, you your know, favorite, I, or is this it? This is it. I mean, yeah. I enjoy what I do right now. Yeah. I mean, I do I miss patrol, but I do get to, uh, I'm in a cruiser, as you can see, I'm in uniform, so right. I still get to jump on calls now and then, which I enjoy doing. I do come in and work a lot of overtime, so um, the jail, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. it's just for some people, it's for them, and some it's not, but um, I enjoy what I do right now. Yeah, the, the jail is a very tough uh, assignment. It's, uh, uh, our office is, is actually in the jail. The sheriff's my office and, and my administrative assistant Kelly Roberts is in the jail. And so sometimes when we can even hear in, in, in other areas of the jail where these people are screaming and yelling. So it's, it can be very yeah, difficult. It's, it's, it's a challenging job. I respect those uh, men and women that work in there and I yeah. just couldn't do it. So Okay, you remember the SWAT team. I am. And uh, so tell us a little bit about the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office SWAT team. Uh, well, I've been on a team for about nine years. Uh, we execute any high-risk search warrants, barricades, um, hostage, anything of that nature. Sometimes we call out on suicidal people that barricade themselves and to houses. Um, I also uh, am a negotiator, so sometimes uh, if I'm the first one I've seen, I will start negotiations until we get our actual negotiation team there. Uh, also, I'm a, a team leader on our team, so I do a variety of things. I'm in charge of our training with SWAT, so I sit down, me and a few other guys, the first of the year, and we will go through what we want to train on for that particular year. I'll set up dates, venues, any equipment that we might need, so it's my job to go through and make sure all that's ready to go. Well, you're a busy guy. Every time. I am. I, I don't get a lot of downtime, a lot of time to sit around. So. So with the, the way that our SWAT team is set up within the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office, these are not deputies that are uh, assigned full-time, right? Like some of the bigger cities, you guys actually and gals actually have other assignments. We are, like I said earlier, I, I have my assignment with uh, Job and Family Services. This is uh, an extra, it, it, it's an extra responsibility. 
we're called out on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I could be out doing something with my family and the phone goes off or the, the text goes out that we have a situation and I have to stop what I'm doing and go. So a lot of extra training requirement. You know, we're required to train so many hours a month. Prior to getting on the SWAT team, we have to go through a basic SWAT school, which is, is no walk in the park. Uh, you get through that and then you just you start at the bottom of the SWAT team doing the I don't call them, none of the jobs are easy, but you start out doing the so maybe the uh, perimeter jobs, and you can work your way into maybe doing entries into houses. So, and you mentioned team leader. What what does a team leader do within a SWAT team? Well, the team leaders. So we have team leaders from anywhere from our our commander, all the way down to our teams. Our SWAT team is broke up into an Alpha and a Bravo team. So you have team leaders for that, and then we have a training team, which is what I'm on. Okay. So I'm a team leader on that. So. Basically, I'm in charge of the training for SWAT. What type of training would a SWAT member go through? We do anything from, obviously, firearms training. We would do anything from room clearing, uh, hostage negotiation, rescue missions. Um, we do anything. We have ordinances that we may apply. We sometimes we would deploy flashbangs, um, any type of gas into the house. Um, so we have to know how to use those less lethal, so you, you have to know all this stuff. So it's, we have um, certain guns that will shoot out less lethal, uh, less lethal ammunition and also shoot out as far as your gas. So you really gotta make sure that these guys know what they're doing. So if you tell them to go get something off the truck, a bag off of the truck that we maybe need to deploy gas into a house, these guys better know or make sure that they're, they got the right one and they're not shooting something into the house that they shouldn't be. Some of the stuff can be dangerous. Um, you know, we may f shoot distraction devices into the house, but you got to make sure you get the right one. It's not maybe a pyro that's going to burn the house down. So, right. So a lot of a lot of uh, responsibility comes to making sure all you guys know what they're doing and that we're all on the same page. Plus, it's one of the more dangerous type of encounters you could be involved in, especially with a high risk search warrant or maybe a barricaded situation. They are uh, they very dangerous. I, I have a, a plaque at home that somebody got me that said, when the cops call 911, they call SWAT. So it's, it's you know, we're called in for the most dangerous of situations that the law enforcement encounters. Now, as a negotiator, when you're, uh, you uh, obviously try to make contact w with, the, with the individual, uh, what are some of the, the, without giving a, a lot of things away, but what are some of the things you kind of try to de-escalate within the individual? One thing, you try to build a rapport with them. There's a lot of do's and don'ts uh, when you go through the class that you don't want to tell them, you don't want to ask them, you don't want them to uh, to know. But basically, get them on the phone, get them talking, see what's going on, see what their issue is, right? How we're going to resolve this? Yeah, because the bottom line, you want to try to make well, sure that they're not injured, uh, a civilian, uh, one of our deputies, not. Bottom injured. line is, we want everybody to go home safe, right? And get the help that they need, and nobody gets injured. That's the number one goal. Any any cases uh, in in the past that are memorable that so, you, you could talk about today? Uh, you know, a lot of them are memorable. There's several that, and some end in tragedy, don't they? Yes, they do. There's yeah. been a few incidents that I've been on that have ended in tragedy, and some that have ended good. Right. Um, you know, I've recently got an email from somebody that thanking me for an incident that just wanted to say thanks. You know, and it was neat to kind of feel appreciated so yeah now one of the other things you do uh, outside of the the uh, SWAT team is you're involved in in service within the whole sh sheriff's office right that's another thing that's kind of I just recently went through a class over at the Ohio Police Officers Training Academy it was a course to be an instructor through the state um, to be able to teach in basic police academies and to be able to teach in service to our uh, men and women the state has uh, mandated classes or mandated training that we, we have to go through every year. Right. Um, and I really look for with some of the events that have happened in the last year for the state and well our federal government to really step in and make us go through a lot more training. So this class that I went through is going to enable me to be able to instruct our people, build the lesson plans, and, and teach this to them. You know what? what 
always impresses me is a lot of times uh, when you hear something on the news about a law enforcement agency that it can be negative or somebody made a mistake or uh, sometimes things have been blown out of proportion. But the reality is when you look at all the calls that, that we go on, not only in, in Fairfield County but throughout the law enforcement community, uh, it's just a small fraction where there's some kind of uh, controversial issue. By and large, the men and women go out every day, every single day, and, and they do their job and without incident. And we don't hear about that. We don't hear that, but, it, yeah, I mean, you think of the thousands and thousands of calls that I know of in the years that I've been on uh, that potentially could have been very dangerous that ended up being, you know, handled very well or the few that have ended in tragedy. It's, 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 it's pretty much, it's kind of slim to none. The percentage is very, very low. Um, and that's why we train for what we train for. Um, it, we try to train for just basically you just want the best outcome, whatever possible, right. is what you want. And you hope that sometimes we only have split seconds to make a decision. And you want to hope that you make that right decision. And that's why training is so important. Training that's is why we important. do it every single year. And I, I don't turn down a lot of training. I, I try to go to as much as possible just for that incident. You know, it could depend on your life, it could depend on somebody else's life. Um, so I'm looking forward to this next step into my career with the teaching. and. Yeah. Training our guys. Before airtime, uh, we talked about something that we're going to be putting out is a most wanted list on our website, and, and that's going to be coming soon. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, most wanted, we're going to list anything from some of the child support warrants that I have to maybe some people that our detectives are looking for, um, or just maybe some patrol guys they have somebody that they're out looking for. So, anybody that we put on this, we're going to put on our website. If you have any information, send it to us, and by all means, we'll follow up on it. Yeah, and our website is uh, www.sheriff.fairfield.oh.us, and our uh, media specialist, Kelly Roberts, uh, if you have any questions or anything, you're certainly welcome to call into our office. And I think that's going to be a great help as far as what people will be able to go on our website and, and actually see who we're looking for. And it's so important, isn't it? I bet a lot of times when you're picking up people on warrants, a lot of it's from tips, right? Well, I, a lot of my success is from tips, and I, I follow up on them. There's, there's more eyes and ears out there than there are us. Yeah. People are sometimes reluctant to, to get involved, but you don't have to give your name or anything like that. We'd be more than happy to take your tip. Now, we, talked, uh, we just have a, a little bit of time left, but some of the training coming up this year that we're going to be doing within the Sheriff's Office. We are. We're going to be doing a lot of, uh, as far as firearms training, we've got uh, maybe some self-defense classes we're going to be going through. Um, i got to work on a lot more things. We're going to do some active shooting, possibly. Mm -hmm. So, Good. That's going to be great. And also, it's going to be on Facebook and Twitter, the most wanted. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, hey, we're just about out of time. Do appreciate you joining us. T.J. Strawn, a 16-year veteran of the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office, assigned to the uh, Job and Family Services Child Support Division with us the last couple weeks. We're going to make it a little bit sooner since you haven't been here in a few years uh, yeah. because it would be good to keep updated on what's going on. Do appreciate your service to the yes, community, and uh, T.J.'s always done a terrific job wherever he's uh, worked within the Sheriff's Office. Well, we're just about out of time. Just uh, wanted to thank each of you to jo who join us each and every week. Again, I'm appreciative of Fairfield Christian Academy, the, the students that put this program together, executive producer Kelly Roberts, and certainly you, the viewers and listeners. Until next week, same time, same place, God bless, buckle up, and we'll see you right here next week. waters were woven into the culture of Native American tribes. The descendants of the early Europeans built a business here based on agriculture. 
and today, this unique destination in the central Ohio countryside comes to life with stories and memories centuries old. The Fairfield County Historical Parks invites you to amazing Rock Mill. Above the falls of the Hocking River Gorge, here, together, nature and man have created some truly American stories that you'll want to experience with the entire family. Visit us or learn more about Rock Mill and the largest wooden water wheel in the nation at historicalparks.org.